Welcome to Greenland, Colorado. That's right. I don't even know if this is a town out here. Uh, it's between Denver and Colorado Springs. It's called Greenland. And the reason I came here are for the dirt roads. And sure enough, the roads are clear. Uh, in Boulder, Colorado, where I went to school, it's like people love running on the trails in Boulder. But believe it or not, a lot of the pro athletes that train there, elite athletes, Olympians, they train there for the dirt roads that are just north of Boulder. Well, I have been eyeing these dirt roads here in Greenland, Colorado for years and years, and I've never explored them. But they look very hilly. I'm looking at one right now. They look very hilly, and it's going to be perfect for today's workout. And what is today's workout? Okay, how to run faster, threshold running, AKA tempo runs. A lot of you have heard of a tempo run. Back at the studio, I will explain exactly what a tempo run is, what it does for your fitness, how it helps you uh, prepare for racing. So we'll get into the details of that soon, but I'm gonna lace up, hold on. And for the threshold workout, the tempo workout today, we're gonna take out the Skechers Razor 3. I was a little on the fence between this guy and the Turbo, even though they have a similar weight class. Um, anyway, so we're gonna go with the Razor 3. I'll talk more about this back of the studio as well. All right, dirt roads, blue sky. Let's rock and roll, baby, come on. There we have it. Oh, I can't wait to talk to you guys about threshold running. Okay, that was three miles. Boom, spot on. Quick swig of water, and then I'm going. Uh, so now, 16 more miles. This is uh, basically my long run for the week, uh, but I can't explain it now, like what I'm doing and why I'm doing it this way, but we will do that you know where. All right, come on, 16. Realizing I don't quite have enough room to stand here. Hold on. I gotta, I gotta move this around. Hold on All right now we're set and ready to go to talk about Threshold training, but first two boxes arrived today. This one appears to be directly from running warehouse I have no idea what's inside this box. We will open this one up in about five minutes. Stay tuned This guy we're gonna save these are used running shoes. You know who you are who sent them. Thank you so much Oh, cannot wait to open those and for today's run 22 miles 35 kilometers overall uh, 620 per mile and the first three miles was a warm-up and then I went in, I went right into the threshold effort I didn't change shoes just kept the Skechers Razor 3s on and the threshold I wanted it to be basically right at 535 to 540 pace and that's where I was I glanced down at my watch you know maybe once every mile just to make sure I was I was moving at the right pace and okay and then uh, 1300 feet of elevation gain so it was not flat by any means very rolly hills out there at about 7,000 feet above sea level so if you're looking for a great faster than trails like you you're getting ready for a good marathon or half marathon effort and you want some some of that uh hilly work and uh, at elevation and it was it was immaculate down there and moving on to today's topic last week we talked about how to run faster upper right hand corner building your aerobic engine remember recruiting and developing those capillary beds 
for LSD runs, long, slow distance runs. Uh, so that was last week. This week, I want to talk about threshold training, lactate threshold training, specifically also known as tempo runs to a lot of other people in the running world. I prefer the word, the terminology of threshold training because it's a little more accurate as to what is happening inside of your body uh, when you are doing this type of training. So what is lactate threshold? Basically, as you are running, the faster you're going for longer distances, there's lactate that is uh, created in your bloodstream, and I'm not going to get into the chemistry. I'm not. I'm not a scientist, as you know. But lactate builds up in your bloodstream, and so that burning sensation that you feel when you're running a race, that is lactate building up in your bloodstream, and it's not being uh, basically pumped. It's not being um, what's the term? Um, it's not being cleared fast enough from your bloodstream and therefore it's accumulating in your bloodstream and that is what the burning sensation is in your legs when you start to hurt late in a race okay so that is lactate and in order to train your lactate because that's really if you think about it like when you're running a race oftentimes you're breathing hard but if you're in good fitness shape a lot of times what's going to end up slowing you down is the pain in your legs like you're going to start to cramp up you're going to start to feel um your legs are going to start to feel heavy that's what's actually going to cause you to slow down therefore in order to run faster and listen i am talking specifically about marathon training and half marathon training 5k 10k it's absolutely critical to do lactate threshold work but we're going to cover that in a different video as, as far as how to go about uh, doing that for like high schoolers, for the 5K, 2 mile. It's just a little different because the distances are so much shorter. And so as you're racing, your lactate is slowly going up and up and up. And then you're going to reach a certain speed after a certain amount of time. And it's different for everybody. Uh, it's going to start to go up exponentially based on how well you have trained your lactate threshold point. And you want the goal is that you want to push when that when that uh, chart starts to go up exponentially. You want to push it further and further out down the distance chart and down the speed chart based on your abilities so that that pain in your legs does not set in early in the race. And that point is exactly the point you want to train at. You don't want to go faster. You don't want to go slower. You want to find that point and hold it and just hold hold it. You don't want to go further and further into oxygen debt. That is, that's an anaerobic effort. You don't want to go there. That means you're going too hard, too fast. And you obviously don't want to go too slow because then you start, you start flirting with uh, long, slow distance days. And now how do you actually go about training your lactate threshold? The first step is you need to figure out your 5k PR. All right. So maybe let's just take 18 minutes as, a, as an example. If that is your 5k PR, you want to subtract 20 to 30 seconds from that average mile pace. Now, I realize a 5K is like 3.1 miles, but we're just going to call it three miles for simplicity. So that's six minutes a mile. Therefore, your pace for your lactate threshold run or your tempo run would be 620 to 630 per mile. Does that make sense? All right. And so let's let, let's say you're a fast high school kid and you're running like around 15 minutes. Whoa, that means your uh, lactate threshold pace or your your tempo run would be about 520 to 530 per mile. All right. Now, once you have found that threshold pace, that tempo run pace, you want to think about the distance that you are preparing for. And again, we'll talk about 5K, 10K, two mile training it down the road. Today, I want to focus on marathon specifically, maybe a little bit of half marathon. For the marathon, here's what I'm going to do. So guess what? The Cleveland Marathon is 12 weeks away. 12 weeks. It's, a, it's, a, it's, it's the perfect timing. Three months of threshold training. It's, oh, oh, it's beautiful. So here's what I'm going to do. You might do something a little differently, but I called today's run... So I know it was a long run with the 22 miles, but that, that three mile threshold effort was a baby threshold effort. What will I do over the next 12 weeks? Every other week, I will add three miles to my threshold run. So the 
LSD, the long, slow distance pace, will be reduced and the threshold pace mileage will increase. So it'll, it'll start to go like this and eventually that tempo run pace will overtake the LSD pace. Does that make sense? So this week was three miles. In two more weeks from today, hopefully if the weather holds, two more weeks from today, I'll do six miles and then nine miles and then 12 miles and then 15 miles, okay? And listen, listen, I am getting ready to run a fast marathon. Like that is the goal. And like there's a difference between running a marathon and racing a marathon. I think everybody out there wants to race a marathon and go as fast as possible. Therefore, I want to prepare my lactate threshold as best as possible. If, if I want my legs to feel like, you know what, at mile 22, if I can push off the pain to in, in the actual marathon race to, to mile 22, we are gonna be looking real pretty, real pretty. That is the goal. And as you know, I'm preparing to get ready for 518 pace at sea level. That's the goal. So of course the key word today is threshold. And I hope that made sense. And listen, we didn't get into the nitty gritty science of the, uh, of the lactate building up in our body and like how that happens chemically. Maybe we'll dabble in that more down the road, but I just wanted to give you that overview of how I plan to run faster in 2019 by training my body to push that lactate threshold point, whatever that point is, before it starts going up exponentially, I wanna push it further and further down the race course. Oh baby, all right, question of the day. Do you use lactate threshold training uh, in your current training? Have you ever used lactate threshold training? What do you think about lactate threshold training, um, AKA tempo runs? And let me know your thoughts about this whole genre of racing. I would appreciate it. Okay, I'm grabbing for a knife because I cannot resist. I, I know the vlog is getting a little long because I just talked for a while. I can't resist. I gotta open, I gotta open this box. These are used shoes to give away. These don't, I, I can't, oh, I cannot wait. Oh my goodness. I did not order these, I don't think. I don't think I ordered these. So, run. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Who have thunked it? There we go. Woo, baby. A uh, sketch. Sketchers. 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 Oh my goodness. Thank you. I did not order these. All right, here we go. Dun dun dun. Hold on. I'm wondering. Hold on. Oh, baby. Oh, look at that, ladies and gentlemen. Hold on, though. Are these okay? Okay. <laughs> these are not for me. False alarm. That's okay. I think somebody just bought these brand new for someone because this is a size 10. Thank you. These are the Skechers Go Run Ride 7. That's amazing. Uh, that's amazing. These are not for me, obviously, because they're size 10. I, you are amazing. So somebody's gonna get a brand new Skechers Go Run Ride 7 size 10 at some point when we when we start doing the giveaway. You're amazing. Uh, I don't exactly know who did this, but thank you. Oh, what a beautiful world we live in. Seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. Ah, oh, all right, I'm going inside to reply to all of your comments about the running shoes. Remember yesterday's vlog? I've got probably 100 comments to get to, so I gotta get busy, let's go.